It is time to round up one of the biggest topics of the week, and that is inmates dying in custody. Just yesterday, a handcuffed man lost consciousness and died in the Dallas County Jail lobby. Last week, a man was found hanging in his cell at the HPD detention facility downtown. And then there is Sandra Bland. Waller County investigators say she committed suicide in a cell last month. Some critics say Bland was not monitored enough, considering she filled out a questionnaire admitting to depression in the past. Lawmakers are now looking closer at standards and procedures in jails, especially when it comes to inmates that may be mentally ill. So what more can be done to stop inmates from taking their own lives? And are they being monitored enough? Inmates dying in custody is our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also send a tweet. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel led by our senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, our news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Valley. Good to see you guys. Good, Good morning. morning. So do you think there's any policy or procedure that could be put in place that would have prevented uh, any of these deaths? So, uh, several. Uh, first, we can start treating the mentally ill like people that are actually sick instead of a scourge on society. County jails, the Harris County Jail is the biggest mental health facility in the United States of America. That says something very, very bad about our mental health system in this country if we would rather lock them up and hold them in jail than get them treatment. So that's the first thing. Second, the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure allows every judge in Texas to give a pretrial release bond at no cost to a defendant. Sa people like Sandra Bland, who were arrested for a minor traffic offense that escalated into something that it shouldn't have, can and should be given pretrial release bonds. That will re re reduce the uh, overcrowding in our jails and get people in places where they need to be. Had Sandra Bland been given a uh, pretrial release bond, Mustafa Tamis, she probably would be alive today. Absolutely, and, and, and look, there's a systemic <coughs> problem when this occurs not uh, once in a while, but routinely we're seeing these type of incidents happen across the country. And in Harris County, as you said, uh, when you said it's the largest facility that holds mental Ill illness across the country, that's one out of four prisoners. That's, a, that's astonishing. A quarter of the population in the Harris County Jail has a mental health issue. And so they're not just uh, a, a drain on a society, but it says something about us and how we treat the people that are the, 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 the most vulnerable. So the mentally health uh, issue, mental health issue is not being addressed by the Texas legislature. And it needs to, so I was very proud of Garnett Coleman, uh, our state representative, who held a hearing and talked about these important issues. You know, the legislature did, the Texas legislature, <coughs> excuse me, did pass a bill in the last session, and Governor Abbott uh, vetoed it at the last minute that would have allowed the doctors in hospitals to hold people for 48 hours. Yeah, I, I don't know the specifics about that, about that bill, and I didn't know we were going to talk about that bill, but specifically with Sandra Bland in this case, uh, we do know that there are a lot of people with mental, Hill, uh, mental illness in the Harris County jails, and our Judge Emmett has said that we don't have the resources to properly take care of them. In the case with Sandra Bland in particular, um, uh, this woman clearly had many issues going into it. She told people she felt like she was going to commit suicide. She was on the phone calling relatives. No one had the resources to come get her, et cetera. So so I don't know quite, I'm not quite sure if I agree with your statement that if uh, the, the bail, uh, if we had a reform system in bails, that she would still be alive because there were many issues there. But definitely there is a mental illness problem in all jails. Well, you'll agree. And that's, that and that's something that all of us will agree with. Sure, and you'll, you'll agree that if the judge had given her a pretrial release bond, which is free to the defendant, she wouldn't have died in that jail. I agree that she would have been out, but we yeah. don't know if she would have died uh, where she would have that's died because she, she did say she was suicidal. She told everyone she was suicidal. Now, much has been made about the, the monitoring of her, and, and while the monitoring may have been lax, if she just simply made a statement that I've been depressed in the past, how, how much monitoring does a jail have to give in that point? Well, we, our, our, our frontline people, whether they're in jail or police officers, just don't have adequate training when it comes to mental health issues. Uh, there are ways to screen these type of things, and not just for Sandra Bland, but, but for all of us. You know, sometimes we think of these issues that they don't affect us. Like, I'm not in jail, or I, I, don't, I don't have a mental health issue. But the reality is there's so many Americans are dealing with mental health issues, and she was stopped not for, you know, sticking up somebody in, in, in a 7-Eleven. In she was stopped for a routine traffic 
incident. How many of us have been stopped for traffic violations? Imagine standing up, knowing someone that, that gets stopped for a traffic violation, ends up in jail, and next thing you know, three days later, they're dead. All right. Something has to be done. Let me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a look at our Facebook page. First, viewer Ben says, I want to know what prevented Sandra <clears throat> Bland's family and friends from raising $500 within 24 hours to get her out of jail? And then if we scroll a little further down, Diana says, I would just like to know why not putting her cigarette out was an arrestable offense. That officer was directly engaging her, knew his presence was causing her stress, and then things escalated from there. That officer was wrong, she says, in his handling of the situation and should be sanctioned for that and made to have to ride with a partner for the next year. You know, let me address the first one, then I'm going to go to the panel. Uh, some people don't have $500. Uh, some, some people are, are so strapped that $500 is rent or food for their children. That's why we have a, a procedure in the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure allowing for a pretrial release bond at no cost to the defendant. And that's what should be employed more and more across Texas. We've been talking about that for years among the lawyers who, who, who have influence and the judges still refuse to use them as they should. Now, let's talk about the officer for a minute as the, as the second uh, uh, person posted there. They think there are a lot of people think that officer should be sanctioned. As a mother of two, um, as a single mother of two black boys, I've always told them, look, you treat a police officer the same way you do, you treat them with respect the same way you do a teacher, the same way you do a clergyman. If you're pulled over, my older one is driving now, if you're pulled over, you answer his questions, you're polite, uh, and then you won't see a lot of things exasperate into other actions. Uh, whenever a police officer orders you to do something, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how it turns out, there are laws backing his order. Even if he's wrong. Even if he's wrong. And so I've always told my young men, just be polite, respect them the same way you do other leaders in the community. Hopefully things will work out. I agree with that, but at the same time, while I agree with what Jackie just said, at the same time, the officer is the professional here. And while this is a highly tense situation because the officer doesn't know what he's walking into, ordering someone to put out a cigarette, order them out of their car, that's over the top, isn't it? And, and, that's, and that's something that has to be looked at. And I think more information is coming <coughs> out about this officer, about his past record, how he's treated people in the past. That's going to all unfold as part of this investigation. And I think we're going we're gonna to see the same pattern. It's, it's few officers that have a bad record that keep coming up and doing these type of offenses. When most of the officers are good, good people working hard. Yes. And, 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 but at the same time, we need to do more about training. And, and this bond issue that you pointed out, look, Harris County is one of the worst in terms of it. And the bond industry in Harris County makes a little over $33 million. Only $2 million go back to the county. So the rest of it's profits. There is a mechanism preventing this reform from yeah, happening. Yeah, but Chief Justice Nathan Hepp just came out with a statement and he wants to form a committee to look at our whole bills. Uh, policies and reform. So you do have legislators, you do have judicial leaders who are going to be looking well, at this. I, I'm, gl I'm, glad I'm, glad they, I'm, I'm glad they're thinking about it, but while they're thinking about it and talking about it, people are dying in prison. They're so we need to do something now. It. He's actually formed a committee. It right. hasn't happened yet. We'll it. see where it goes. He is now.